Welcome back to our special edition on Air Force Academy football. What sort of person has what it takes to tackle an incredibly rigorous school schedule while at the same time face down some of the toughest competition in Division I football? Well, let's meet a few of them now and find out. Get right, hunt seam, on one, ready? Reggie, uh, he's my guy, he's, he's my corner. You know, guy's five, six and a half, you know. But he plays like he's 6'1". Big heart, tremendous amount of pride the way he plays the game. Uh, but also a kid that excels on the hill. Uh, he was a squadron commander this summer in, in uh, basic training. Um, had over 100 troops under his uh, command. Uh, did a great job, but also is a first team all-conference kid in football. So he's the epitome, you know, he's too short for everybody else. Big heart, a lot of intangibles, and has performed at a great level. I'm excited. I'm really, I'm putting some words out there saying we're going to do some things things great this year so I'm, I'm really looking forward to the season. I think we've got a great team and one of the best I've been a part of so I'm, I'm excited. Jared, another kid not highly recruited out of high school, uh, came here and showed us what he can do. Uh, we put the ball in his hands at an early age and he just thrived in this offense. Um, but another kid that, you know, not a big rah-rah, you know, scream up and down the field type of kid, but hard hat, brings his lunch pail to work and goes out and gets it every day. Uh, we definitely have high hopes. I, I think we have a really good team. Um, the, the attitude here is real positive. And, um, I, I think you know, we, have, we have the personnel to, to have a great season this year. Tim's a kid that has grown and grown and grown. Went to our prep school, had other schools he could have went to, but flying uh, was a big interest to him. Um, he was a good one to recruit and a good one to watch play. It's going along pretty well. You know, we're still working, so we've got a long ways to go, but hopefully in the long run we'll get everything down and we'll be all right in the draw. He's a kid that doesn't take a backseat to anybody. No other Division One offers. Uh, came here as a wide receiver. Uh, people thought he wasn't fast enough. And all he did is came here and worked and worked and worked and worked. He will compete his tail off every single day, and um, that's why he's had the success he's had. Oh, we just need to focus on our stuff and doing our stuff right and not having to think about it to where we're just out there doing it rather than just thinking about it and being a step slow. Get right, hunt seam, on one, ready? The Falcons often find their heads in the clouds after a big win on game day both figuratively and literally, since they actually play their home games at more than 7,000 feet above sea level. But they know they've got to come back down to earth eventually and put their noses back in the books. This little book is called Contrails. It's given to first-year cadets shortly after they complete basic cadet training. It's chock full of Air Force history and information. The cadets are expected to memorize it and be able to recite portions of it verbatim. Of course, that's just the start. There are mountains of homework, uniform and room inspections, and lots of tests to study for. When you add on top of that countless hours of football practice and games, it quickly becomes clear that time management is essential to survival here. A cadet's day is very structured. From the time they get up until the time they go to bed, just about every single minute is scheduled. For football, we have uh, position meetings around you know 6:45, 6:50, so we have to wake up, you know, in time like 6:15 in order to get to those. The whole cadet wing has breakfast at 7:20. Following that, we we go to class. Being an intercollegiate athlete at the academy, we have all our classes packed in the morning, so we we're done at 12. And then based on what day it is, you know, we'll march. If we don't march, we just go straight to lunch. And then we pretty much have to book it down to down to football to make meetings, and then we lift and practice, and then come up and get back to our room and a few hours of homework, go to bed, and time to do it all over again. It's tough because you're down at football for four or five hours and then you got to come back and you got to be able to to get hit the books hard and stuff like that because you don't have as much time as you know other cadets. So I mean it's tough and but you just got to do it. You got to suck it up and you got to do it. This is my side of the room and as you can tell I'm, I don't have very many you know uh, entertainment type things. I try to stay focused. Uh, I, I get distracted easy. This is my my roommate. He's not a football player. Um, he has a lot more time than I do. Every single one of these uh, cadets has to learn an awful lot about time management so they can perform 
at uh, top levels across the board, and they do a pretty darn good job of it. We're real proud of them. Those countless hours spent on the field result in several lessons the players can apply off of it. Because they learn commitment, because they learn a sense of devotion to their duty as we assign it uh, down in the athletic department, oftentimes we see them emerge as just fantastic role models and leaders. Head coach Troy Calhoun knows all about the positive influence the academy experience can have on a young person. He's an alumnus of the class of 89 and coached for four years in the NFL before taking the helm at the academy in 2007. He approaches each football season with a goal that's in tune with what the cadets strive to do during their four years at the school, become better every day. I want to see us develop as a football team from the beginning to the end. It's a haul, it's a grind, and it's a process. But in order to be well prepared, you just got to have that foundation. And, uh, I love the way our guys practice. Uh, you can tell they enjoy the heck out of being out and being a part of football. And, uh, and yet we got a good ways to go. But at least you can see some seeds of capability. And uh, that's the part that gets you fired up. Well, it's wonderful having a coach who is a graduate who did well here at the academy. I oftentimes find myself speaking at events with Coach Calhoun, and they're looking at each other kind of, is he also the dean? Because he is as passionate about our cadets and, and the total person development as well as them doing well academically. You know, unquestionably, there's a clear-cut purpose and a mission at the Air Force Academy, and that is uh, to bring young men and young women to the academy when they're 18 years old and help them grow and develop their kids into being officers. You know, that includes a uh, preparation academically, uh, militarily, and the leadership responsibilities that they have. And uh, every one of those obligations and standards have to be met before you even get a chance to uh, even put a practice helmet with their shoulder pads on. And so uh, that's the priority as it should be at the Air Force Academy. But we still play good football, too. Coming up, you'll meet a player whose tireless efforts have led him to a point where he'll have to choose between two lifelong dreams.